everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. I noticed from this angle, wow. I look like I'm twice as big as you. I, I guess I don't get to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Sam. Continuous improvement. <laughs> We don't need you to introduce yourself. We got graphics. That's Look at true. that, man. You see that? You popped in. Bloop. But you if you don't come, up, if you don't start watching right away, you don't know who anyone is. No, we should probably say our names every now and then, <laughs> like after the top five. Let's say, like the fifth one. Hey, if you're just joining. <laughs> <laughs> if you're just tuning in now. All right. Uh, so what are we talking about here, boss? Today we're talking about top ten games that keep getting better. So. Mm -hmm. We were talking about this yesterday, differentiating this from top 10 games that got better over time. These are games that continuously I'm finding maybe new strategies. Mm -hmm. I'm finding that it, uh, each time I play it, I, I like it a little bit more each time, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or at least it stays on a high level. Um, I feel like I haven't discovered all there is about these games. Right. That there's more. And sometimes these games, I'm like, yeah, I think it's good. Then I play it again. I'm like, what? Still really liking this. Yep. Yeah, it's different from our list uh, that we were sort of a little, we were looking at our list thinking, isn't this kind of like this other list we did, talking about, uh, what do you call year. them, kangaroos? That's what I call them, kangaroos. Yeah, which is a game you did not like, and now you like, or a game you liked, and then you loved, right? That's the idea. Correct. These are games that have, have developed, sort of evolved, and... Uh, like you said, they kind of pull that mind trick on you where you don't play it for a while and you remember it as being pretty good, bring it back, and it surprises you again. Yeah, that's a good word for you it. You know what I mean? I, I, I think there's a few games out there that manage to do that to surprise, me all the time. This idea of like, surprise, I played this, surprise. I liked it. Like, I really like it. I play it, I really like it. Six months go by, and I remember it being all right, you know. But then, you finally play it again. Like, this happened to me on the cruise. I played uh, the, the Augustus game, Rise of Augustus. I remember it being pretty good. Gamer. Played it again. I was like, that's really good, man. Gamer. That's a fun Bingo. game. You know, this, th yeah. you're right. This does happen a lot for me with gateway-style games because mm -hmm. I won't play them for a while. And then some new people, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I bet you guys will like this. We play it. And I'm like, this is a great game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm here playing this. <laughs> Even though I knew that and I told them it was a great game, halfway through, I'm like, I wasn't lying. It this really is good. surprises you with how good it is again. So, all right. That's what we're talking about. Or it surprises you that you didn't lie the first time. I I'm lied. always surprised. I'm not saying I, I lied. Yeah. I'm just saying. You you enhanced the I truth. I was a sell, salesperson. All right. Who's first? Is it Sam? It is Sam. Let's do it. Okay. Number 10. No, he didn't do nothing. Don't 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 let him fool you. He lied. Hey, hey. He's lying. He, Camera he tricks. did not lie. He enhanced the truth. <laughs> no. That was, that was All right, what's your number 10? Bold fade a lie. Number 10 is not a lie. Uh, my number 10 is uh, King of Tokyo. And I do not play King of Tokyo a lot. But every time I come back to it, I am refreshed with how simple it is and yet how fun it is. Yes. And uh, it's just one of those games that is like an evergreen for me. And I kind of, um, I kind of think that that's what this list is all about: is those games that continue to be evergreens and they just keep getting greener no matter how much you play them. Uh, whereas some games they can kind of start, you know, going downhill after a while. You get tired of them. You get uh, kind of just done. King of Tokyo is one of those games that you can always come back to and you can always have fun with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the dynamic that changes between uh, whether or not you're going to go for points or you're going to go for uh, just outright mayhem in Tokyo, that type of thing changes with the people you play with because you kind of have to adapt to what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the games that I can change tactics midstream. Uh, sometimes you have to. And nope. That's, you never have to stop killing people. And that's how you lose sometimes. So uh, that is King of Tokyo, <laughs> my number 10. I might lose, but at least I have my dignity. You okay, I might not have my dignity, but at least I have my honor. I have something. You killed at least one other person. You have before a bunch of trophies. Of that doesn't even always happen. Really? Oh, that's bad. Man. You're a bad player. <laughs> All right, my number 10 is a two-player game. Uh, that is inspired by some classic games, such as, um, uh, I always forget the name of Checkers. this game. 
chess. No, the one, uh, Kro not Krogan, no, the one where you roll the dice and move along the thingies. Backgammon. Backgammon. Why do I always forget those two words together? Back. You're not cultured. Gammon. I'm not. It's game gammon, called... gammon isn't a word. It's back. I, if, if I got the back part, I'd remember the rest. <laughs> Tatsu is this game. Uh, this is one that when I first saw it, I wasn't sure what to think of it. It's from the same makers as Hive. Very good abstract game. This is not that. This is a lucky game. You are rolling dice. And it is sort of like Backgammon Plus. You have three types of dragons. And those are the pieces. Uh, each one uh, has a special power. And some of the stronger ones, you have fewer of them on the board, but they have really cool abilities like knocking a dragon out or just burning one up. The fire dragon just burns one out. Every time I play, I am surprised by how fun it is to take turns in this game. You're rolling two dice. You're either putting dragons into play, entering them into the board, or moving some around. Enter That's simple. Huh? Enter the dragon. You enter the dragons, yes. But, but those simple... Sorry, but turns. supplies get low. And the very, Aww. you know, just roll a couple dice and use those pips. It really gives me a, a fantastic experience every time. I've, I've never had a bad game of this. Every time I play it, I teach it to someone. I kind of go into it thinking, you know, I hope they don't feel this is too silly, too basic. It's always fun. So I didn't know you even liked this game. This was the one I thought Sam liked. Uh, no, Sam likes Kodinka, is what you're thinking yes. of. Oh, they look the same. No, they do not. Then I don't, how do you know that's what I'm thinking? Because it's they an have, abstract, I mean, this, then it's Sam. They have, they have the same, same kind it's of... from the people who made the wrestling play. flicking dice game. My game is, yes, this is not. It's your game? <laughs> yes, well, I know I'm what you just, mean. Uh, yeah. I know, I know, I know. Anyway, my number 10 pick, the really underrated Tatsu. Happily, the internet has said that gammon is a word. It's a smoked or cured ham like bacon. Yeah, the back gammon the back. Of, a, of a piglet. Yeah, like you knew that. Yeah, of course. That's what the game is based on. You're supposed to be the original <laughs> game. Back in, back when they were playing in medieval times, they would play upon the backs of hogs. <laughs> they would roll dice. and. You hope the pig doesn't move? It's no. dead. Oh. It's a and dead they were hog. It. So I'd be like, roll some dice, peel off the strip. <laughs> That's how you get salmonella. You gotta wait till it's cooked. Especially in medieval Whoa. times. That's wait, you're playing on a dead, started. uncooked pig? While it's cooking. You better, it's, <laughs> you that's better. what the doubling cube originally is. The temperature would double. And your feet are where? Please your feet start, are in the coals. Please okay. start your number 10. My number 10 Thank you. is the newest game on my list. It hasn't come out yet. No, I'm just saying most of the games on the list can't vir by virtue make this list because for this to happen you must have owned it for a while right. played it for a but while but this yes. one i got in september of last year or so but i played it probably 20 times since anachrony no vindication 20 times with that. Vindic that's a lot for me man vindication, vindication he loves that game you know it was funny because i saw my day star west i said i went there and i played all these old games and i was like i played vindication too but i played it enough now that I'm treating it as a game that I play a lot of times. You feel like it's times. been around for a while, yeah. It's just every time I play Vindication, I try a different strategy. I'm like, ah, this time I'm going to do this. This time I'm going to do it. And I'm enjoying it. I just, every time I go, I'm like, ooh, I like doing that. That was fun. Right. This time I played with another one of the many modules in the box. I was like, that was another fun module to play with. I just, again, it's, this is number 10 on my list for a reason, because it's the newest. Right. So it has the least of this Got still it. finding stuff in it. But I still am. I get to play that game. You keep you, you definitely Ringing that are enamored bell. with it, and I know you played it and didn't like it so much, right? Like that. You no, know, there, there's got to be some sort of in between. I it's not like not, great game, just, vomit. There's gonna yes, be like a in between moment correct. in there where you can be like. But this is not in between. Yeah, there's 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 a moment where you're like. Mm, it's okay. Have you <laughs> but then, no, but then, yeah. no food. Like this gets do from that. like. One to ten, this gets a salvage the spew. Right? Yes, this yes. is. A, All right. You were able to swallow it. Two point seven. All right, vindication by number ten. Number nine. Whoosh. My number nine. My number Why nine is, there a is I'm scared. Deception, murder in Hong Kong. Specifically, and I didn't have, I didn't give uh, Roy this uh, graphic, but specifically the undercover allies. 
uh, with the expansion under Cover Eyelash because mm -hmm. it is just that great with the expansion. Uh, it gives you, I think, four, maybe five new roles that you can add into the game. Uh, you can have a, uh, oh, it's just so much fun. And the dynamic of the game, again, like King of Tokyo, changes every single time, but it's still really fun every single time you play it. Uh, it's probably my favorite social deduction game, I think so. maybe. I think so. We'll it's, do a top 10 social deduction games at some point. We'll find yeah, out then. But it is it is just great fun. I, I love the, the, the different teams and how they have to work together. Uh, I, uh, with the with the undercover allies, it actually brings into this uh, idea where the uh, uh, forensic scientist can actually uh, switch teams. What? Yeah. The forensic scientist can so actually at some point you start throwing point, people off. Yes, and you're trying to help the murderer and accomplice get away. That ain't right. And it's, how can you possibly win then? Like, uh, how can the good guys stab win? that person? <laughs> stab that person. I don't remember exactly because I haven't read the rules in, uh, in in a while. But yes, there is a point. There's a card where you flip. It's one of the um, event tiles where you flip them over, and if it's a clue tile, then you have to put a clue out there, but it might be an event tile. And if it's an event tile, it says uh, something to the effect of you are now working for the, the murder accomplice, and now you're Do trying Do people to know that you're doing that? No. Well, that would be weird. Yeah, but how do you know then? I mean, yeah, how can just, the, the good guys win at that point? Maybe at that point all they need to figure out is if that person turned. Yeah. I mean, if you start giving, you know weird, I mean? if you start giving weird clues, people are going to think... You know. Every time you turn on an event tile, but like he, he, he changed. Well, yeah, that's that's the whole like, that's the whole that's the whole dynamic that it introduces into the game. But it's really fun. It's really fun. So uh, every time I play this game, I'm just reminded about how much I like it. And this is one of the games where I actively look for as many people who can play the game as possible because it just it, it's so much better with a great number of people. Uh, if you have just the bare minimums, it's not as fun because you want more of those different uh, roles that are in the game. So that's my number nine, Deception, Deception, Murder in Hong Kong, specifically with Undercover Allies. All right, all right. All righty, my number nine is Paper Tales. Is that what it is? Yes, it is. Um, all right, you're pulling one of mine now. One of yours? Uh, that I don't know what it is. I'm just making sure I did not organize the list, but it's all on here. I just have to <laughs> jump around for the numbers. All right, so my number nine, Paper Tales. Uh, the expansion certainly helped. Like Sam said, expansions will do that for games. But it's a game that... This is not like Tatsu in that when I teach this, it's about a 50-50 split that the people playing, learning it for the first time, will walk away from the table underwhelmed. Because the game is extremely short. It's sure. only four rounds, and it, to many people, those four rounds don't feel like enough development. They start to kind of get it at, by the third, and then by the fourth round, they're like, okay, so the game's over? That didn't feel like enough time. That, that goes away with knowledge of the cards and more play, but even so, I'm still finding fun combos in the game. Uh, I definitely have my preferred ones, but if they don't come up in what you draft, you have to adapt. And you can find some really neat stuff in that adaptation. You know, you can really pull off some, some neat, neat concepts that allow you to keep cards in play for longer than a couple of rounds, which normally is not the case. You can find ways to utilize things that are normally negatives, like the aging tokens, and make them into positive things that give you more combat, more points. I like that. I like a mechanism that seems like a negative thing, yet there are cards, powers, whatever, that turn that on its head make it a thing you should pursue. I really enjoy that, and this game continues to impress me. The expansion's great, and it has a solitaire mode in there that is fantastic, but even just the base game continues to impress me. So my number nine pick, the fantastic card drafting game, Paper Tales. My number nine, you would not guess, I don't think. Oh. So let me help you out and give clues. No way, you wouldn't guess this. It is a five letter game, there's only five letters. Two of the letters do not appear next to each other in any other word in the English language. Um, because the author of this game just randomly puts letters together and names his games after that. It is uh, Yin. No, that, those appear next to each other. It is uh, Devon. It is Devon. 
That was a pretty strong clue. <laughs> no, that was good. That was definitely good. Devon. Now, see, this is a weird one because I distinctly remember when I first saw this, it won Game of the Year from Games Magazine. Really? And I was incensed at the time. I was like, Game of the Year. By the way, still wasn't Game of the Year. But every time I play this, I find more depth and interest in this game than, say, chess. Mm -hmm. I know that that's anathema to the chess fanatics that is watching. Anathema, man. Anathema. <laughs> uh, but Devon is such a really deep game with some really. It's simple because you can only you, you can only move a piece on the outside of the board and you can only move in the exact distance of the stack of that piece. Right. But deceptive because the board changes so dynamically. Mm -hmm. I move a piece here, suddenly I'm threatening this. I move a piece here, suddenly you can move a piece away and five pieces on the board die at that point in time. That's really, I mean, I think the ultimate twist to this game is those three red pieces. Right. That if you are have a piece on the board at any, at any point become detached from a red piece somehow, they're dead. Right. They're wiped off the board. That's it. That's the lifeblood of the game, right? Uh, and you're right, it is. It's a brain melter in many ways, but it's like the simplest brain melter to play I've ever seen. This one is getting close to passing Yinch for me. <laughs> really? Uh, Yinch is a more... It's five in a row. I do love Yinch a lot, though. But the only reason I don't like Devon more, the setup is long. Well, you can play random setup. Yeah. You can just play, like, put the pieces out, put the red pieces in the three center spots or, you know, three central spots, and you can play... Sure, it might favor one side slightly more than the other, but I think it makes the game what? It's faster. It's way faster. And it's faster. less thinky right off the bat, yes. But, it's man, this game just consistently shines for me. Devon, I'm surprised by this one. The only abstract per se on my list. <laughs> the only game shipped as an abstract. Yes. Pretty sure in two ends are in more than just one word in, in English. I meant DV. You've been saving that joke since you said it. <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't worth it. <laughs> Move on. Move on. Number eight. Now, this game that I'm about to say. Oh, here we Hang on. Isn't a shoehorn. Oh, somebody's like, I don't know, no it's, offense, it's, it's, but. <laughs> Wow. Like, this on, game this this I hold enjoy a, a lot. Now, it is lower on this list than it would be on normal top 10 lists. A lot lower. Can oh. we venture guesses? Usually it's oh. around the first or second. Never mind. It's just, what he means is this is on a lot of his lists. No, it's my favorite game of all time Blood Rage. That's my number eight. Oh. The reason it's Where's lower my on my list is because. Each time I go into this game, I'm expecting to enjoy it. I know it's evergreen, and it is always going to be evergreen for me. So the level of, how did you say, surprise mm -hmm. is lower, which is, which is what, how I kind of ordered my, my list. Okay. Um, the number 10 was, you know, the, the least amount of... Uh, of uh, surprise. Sure, I can see that. Yeah. All right, so no, that's why it's number eight. But I am still amazed because uh, we I played this I think three times at Dice Tower West, and uh, even in those three games, the most recent ones that I've played, I still saw combinations that I hadn't seen before. No. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. I Statistically saw, impossible. <laughs> no, seriously. It, it, I, I, I think I saw one combination. I don't even remember what it was. But it, I saw a combination that I did not, I had not seen before. And I like that about this game. There are just so many different things. And, and the drafting is so important. The different combinations that come out, some of them are just like, wow, hadn't seen that before. Other ones are like, uh-oh, he has that. I need to make sure that he's not able to pull off whatever he or she is trying to do. Um, I just really enjoy this game. I don't care. You do? I just really enjoy this game because I don't care if I'm, I'm teaching it. I don't care if somebody else is teaching it. I don't care if we use all of the expansions. I don't care if we use none of the expansions. Every single time I play this game, I love it. And uh, that's my number eight. 
So uh, what's your new number one? That's your number eight game now? <laughs> of all time. No. Oh, Before man, we get to Z. Dropped. Yes, adventure, advent, advance, advantage, advocate, all have DV next to each other. So you were wrong. That's what you're saying. Well, you didn't think of them. I didn't care. I was thinking I about the joke I made about the I guessed. Ends. I guessed the game, so I'm happy about that. Whatever. <laughs> uh, all righty. My number eight pick is the newest version of Arkham Horror, Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. But they are just calling Arkham Horror now. Wow, I thought you were going to say Arkham Horror the card game. No, no. Yet. Arkham Horror 3rd Edition here is... I wasn't sure what to expect before it came out. I did not... I've never played 1st Edition. I did not really like 2nd Edition very much. It's a game that feels extremely bloated, does not feel very thematically driven, all those things. The 3rd Edition uses this codex system to tell a much better story, a much more cohesive story. And even though there are only four stories in the core set, they're kind of long stories, right? The game's still a long game. The combination of events you encounter around the city, and baddies, and the order they come up, branching storylines in that scenario itself, it all makes for really interesting diverse playthroughs and I'm still surprised every time I play with uh, just how engaged I, engaged I am in the game it's a game that is longer than most games I like it's more involved maybe maybe not yeah, this one's fairly simple but it's it's sort of outside of my usual realm of, of play but I've had a blast with it I've taught it I've played it solitaire I just keep enjoying it I think with Vikings for me Cthulhu is for you. I think you're, I don't, I, I don't know. I just don't, I was underwhelmed severely by this game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Severely. Just felt like I was being played more than me playing the game. I think for me it's not necessarily Cthulhu, just like beasties and monsters and stuff. Yeah, but it definitely doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I'm agreeing with you, but I don't think it's as narrow This is why Z hangs out with us, though. Because you guys are animals. <laughs> I have to say because we're ugly, but the animals think it's a nicer way to put it. Yeah, well, that's what I meant, too. I still think it's weird that you were underwhelmed by 2nd Edition and 3rd Edition. I don't know. I feel like there's... I was No, I was underwhelmed by 3rd Edition, not 2nd No, I'm saying edition. Z. Yeah, yeah, me. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, my pick, Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. Do like it. I'm waiting for expansions. Bring it on. Do you think they're coming out with expansions, Tom? I wonder uh, if they'll do expansions <laughs> for this. <laughs> has to sell well, right? Uh, it, uh, <laughs> would you like to take bets on whether there will be I'm expansions? It's about Alrighty. 100 to 1 again. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, my number 8 pick. What you got? My number 8 is an older game also. Um, I think it came out a decade ago from a company that's called With All This Talent Laying Around, Let's Put Out a Game. Why don't we put out a game or something? Is it why like, don't we put out a something game? Something like that, but yes. Does What's it rhyme? Bag? Does the game title for. is a, is the game's title two words and do they rhyme? Yes, Mud Hud. No, it's Jet Set. I can't even think of two words that rhyme. So Mud Hud. <laughs> Mud Hud. Uh, Jet Set. This is a economic ticket to ride. Is the best way to describe it. You're connecting uh, different routes through Europe uh, that you will connect them with your planes, but you have to pull the planes off. You have to pay for the planes. Yeah. The, then you get income from connecting these routes, and you got to try to set yourself up. There's two big expansions for it. I think the first is slightly better than the second. They each add like five modules, right. but there's so much. Every time I go back and play it, I'm like, ooh, I'm going to try this this time. Mm, I'm going to try this sneaky move. It just feels like there's a lot more strategy in the game every time I play it. I really like it, and I feel like I'm the only person playing it sometimes. Sure. I, I, I've played it. I used to own it. It's... Um it's not much of a looker on the table. I agree. And the economy is actually really tight. Very tight. It's Tighter than it looks. It's tight, but it doesn't bother me much because it's tight for everybody. Oh, so I'm sure, like, oh, sure. I'm having a hard time getting money. Well, so are you. So I can go around a couple turns and get the money I need. I just mean I'm, I'm usually teaching new games to new... I'm sorry. I'm usually teaching games to new people. Right. This is... I got, it's deeper than that. You know I what I mean? I taught it twice at Dice Tower West. I just... I played it once and I was like, wow. Yeah, but you're in the in a nest of pros there. The um, nest of pros? Yeah, I'm usually teaching like, you know, people who like Uno and, and uh Cool. 
garbage. Cool story, bro. Let's go on to number seven. <coughs> That's cool. Number seven. My number seven, I actually uh, just to put up a uh, review of the anniversary edition of it today at one o'clock. Oh, uh, that is. Oh, I wonder what this could be. Stone Age anniversary, and uh, this is. Don't forget to talk well, about the disadvantage just Stone Age. of resources. What's that? Don't forget to talk about the disadvantage of resource rolling. Oh yeah, I know, right? I was just replying to somebody with that before the we. Disadvantage uh, of what? Somebody, somebody posted. Oh, Sam forgot to mention the con of the game that you have to roll for your resources. Why would that be anyone's argument? That's like that's like saying the con of a war game is the war part. Yeah, exactly. Conflict. So I don't like the conflict. I just uh, this game every time it hits the table, I'm reminded about how much I enjoy it, and um, it doesn't necessarily make me want to play it immediately again. But the next time it comes up, I'm thinking about how much I enjoyed the last time I played it. Um, it's a very familiar game. It was uh, one of my fam still is one of my family's favorite games to play, um, and. I, I think it's just because it became familiar to us and right. we just em enjoyed it and we continue to enjoy it. And we started to see, you know, at the first, I can, I, I understand what people think about this whole rolling for resources oh, thing. Oh, it's garbage. It's a broken but system. There is so, <laughs> there's so many ways to get around not doing well at the rolling. Well, there's like two ways, but yes. Well, there's, there's a lot of ways. You can mitigate it with the, um, the tools. With the tools. Uh, you can send more people. Yes. That's Two, it. I just. <laughs> and you can send people down to the cards. And you can send people down to the cards. So if you don't have as many resources as everybody else, because you're rolling badly, you can use those resources for the cheaper cards and still do well. Uh, I will say there are two and a half. There are three, nice. at least. Um, and that's just from my mega little brain juices. So my number seven is Stone Age because it just continues to get better. Yeah, so we played this recently, and I still enjoy the game. I think it's very fun, but I don't know that it's gone up for me or down. It's about the same as it was. It's I'd, gone up for me a little bit, but I'd that's still give it a, a pretty seven. low score. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I remember it before, two? He really disliked four, it. I think. Ah. And it went up to like a 5.5 or a 6 after this play we had. Well, that's so nice of you to say. We well, helped make the game better was it for the, you. Uh, no, it was probably the, was the other ways to score points. I liked that. It's yeah. honestly been a really long time since I played it before this play. But no, it was a little bit better. It's just a the game's really simple. For you, it kind of became comfort food, kind of. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. said. Um, and if you just, if you already don't have that attachment there, it's hard to cultivate that attachment yeah, anew. No. But, you know, it's all right. Anyway, my number seven pick, right? Yes. Yes. My number seven pick is Australia with a big old Z, Z. in there in the middle. Australia is, this is basically your newest game, I would guess. Uh, yeah, no, there's one more. No, Arkham Heart. There's one that's slightly newer. You're picking new games. This world is topsy turvy. It's fairly new. I wear my hat. Like anyway, this. Australia is <laughs> dark. Um, it's basically a railroad, like take uh, um, H of steamy kind of map with Cthulhu stuff in it. And you are trying to build farms, connect routes to resources so you can mine them out, all while avoiding monsters showing up and destroying your stuff. That's basically it. And everybody should kind of kill the monsters, but it's not cooperative. If you kill it, if you deal the killing blow, you do score it. You try to get more points. The baddies do score themselves at the end of the game, so it's possible everyone loses. It's more likely with fewer players than with more. I haven't really seen it happen with, you know, three or four um, and I enjoy it. It's it's a worker placement. No, it's a, it's an action selection rather. It's an action selection game. Doesn't look fantastic. Doesn't have a theme I necessarily like. Like fifty percent of that theme, let's say I don't like. But it's clean. I don't know. What you only like the Cthulhu part? Yeah. The other thing is like, come on, we're building railroad track in Australia. You got to Come on, man. You are definitely opposed to train building. I don't like train games. That's a really narrow thing. That's like a real <laughs> specific thing. Well, so is Cthulhu. He's a puffin chili. Yeah, man. Puffin chili. I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, puffin billies are people that enjoy a lot of chain games. Or you they puffin like chili because you cool on it. You chill. That's right. Ch yeah, 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 yeah. That, puffin that. chili. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Is that a new thing? We'll have like a, an area puffin chili, at yeah. a convention where people just come there. And if, and anybody, if anybody walks by with a train game, you're like, boo, <laughs> boo, go buy you, stock somewhere else. You're going to play that stupid train game. Anyway, Australia <laughs> is my number seven. 
I dig it. Uh, my number seven is a slightly new game. It's been out for a year and a half now. This is one that Z hates. Oh, that's, oh, that's just because he's not good at math. Oh. This is this is fairly valid. This is Pulsar 2849. I love this game, and every time I play it, I want to play it more. I, I, I'm pretty good at math, actually. I just don't want to do it while I'm supposed to be playing a game. A diversion. I think it's funny. It, I think it's funny because I was really excited for this game come, to come out back when they were billing it as just a sci-fi game. Yeah, but when they were billing a, a sci-fi game. game, I saw it. I was like, oh, I'm not a sci-fi game. Who cares? I, 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 that I, didn't I was, actually impress me. I was really excited about it, and then it came out, and they gave it an A Pulsar twenty eight forty nine. I was like, "Oh, that's that's a cool name," and he was he, he was just like just not not very interested because mm -hmm. it didn't have a name yet. That was one of your I one of his that. big things. That's probably a problematic thing when a game already gets announced and they haven't even titled it. <laughs> it's a warning sign, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, hey, listen, right. it's a space. It's space. This Whatever. game is super thematic. Get back to us. We'll tell you what that theme is. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but I like all the different options in this game. I like the, the die. I, I'm definitely a sucker for dice drafting, the draft dice. Sure, and okay, use them. I get that. And I love the, the sandboxy games, and this is a very sandboxy Euro. There's a ton of things to do. So many, you can't definitely do them all. Definitely as dry as sandboxes. Sam thought it was slightly better than you thought. You were no, like, I, like, I, I like it. I actually do enjoy it. It just wasn't I what was, you were expecting. Like, nah. Wow, wait. <laughs> 2849 Pulsar me cry. is my number. I don't know what number we're on. I think it's seven. Seven. Yep, number seven. But there was no seven in the name of the game, which would have made sense more. I'm sure you can add some. But of if those you add all those together, up. divide them by Z's. It's 23 altogether. Add and then Cthulhu, you... you get seven. Yes, correct. Number six. All right, let's talk about some good games now, Sam. All right, what my you number got? six. Come on, baby. My let's rescue number us. Number six. Uh, this game continues to get good for me because almost like it comes out with every every new war band that comes out for this game, it's like the game gets better because there's another way to play the game that is pretty much different than all the other ways that you can play the game, and that is Warhammer Underworld Shade Spire slash Nightbolt. Oh, oh, now they're the same? They no, weren't the I, same when we were doing Best of the Year. I said Shade Spire and Slash Night Vault. You're going to get hit. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not going to hit nobody. <laughs> so, Warhammer Underworlds, every single time I play this game, it elevates itself from the last time I played it. Uh, I try to not play the same faction back to back. Okay. Uh, because I like that's part of the the coolness about the game is the I guess you could say the the diversity in play style that each new warband brings to it. Now some of them are similar. Uh, you know the the Oryx play in a similar fashion to the um, oh goodness the um, the nerd dorks. the dorks. No, not the dorks. The orcs and the, the orcs dorks. and the dorks. That's my <laughs> new smash up deck. No, Dork the, Orcs. Dork Orcs. Oh, the Stormcasters, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. They, they play very similar to each other because they're both tank-ish type of, of war bands. But then you have the, the, the Skeletons that play completely differently. Uh, the Skaven that play completely differently than, than any of the other ones. And that's part of the draw for the game for me. And that's why it continues to get better because you have two different factions going at each other almost every time you play the game. And it's like a brand new game, except you already know how to play. You don't have to learn how to play again. I just really enjoy this game. It is it is a great uh, two-player game. I have played it four-player and enjoyed it, but um, I've enjoyed it much, 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 much more with just a two-player game. And I think that's really where it sings. So I think what happened here is he married her, okay? The yeah. Shade Spire is part one. Okay. Night Vault, he killed her. She's come back to get him from the grave. And this is her dad underneath who's also helping her. No, that's he's him. Mad. He's just aged. Ah, uh, yeah, it is the same armor, isn't it? Ah, uh, you're right. You're right. Um, and so what's happening here is she's coming after him and he doesn't even remember her. She's like... Do you remember our marriage? He's like, who? And then she gets even madder because this is wife number four. <laughs> I couldn't hold. 
awkward. I know, Roy, what came back to us. I could tell, I could hear you clicking over there, but I couldn't hold it. <laughs> oh, my goodness uh, me. My number six. Where I forgot what it was. I'm out of the, oh. the theme. And Nightbolt. All right, my number <laughs> six is Keyforge Call of the Archons. Maybe Archons, but probably no, Archons. It's Archons. <laughs> Anyway, Keyforge, um, by its very nature, is the kind of game that continues to evolve. It's going to continue to show you new cards. They have an expansion coming out now, so there's going to be a bunch more stuff there. And I've really enjoyed it. Every time I play, the little combinations, the ability to pull off little things, compounds for me into an experience that I'm really enjoying. Yeah, you can sometimes have a blowout victory. I've seen it happen. There's a couple yeah. of decks that seem to just be beasts. And I'm not tackling I, how... I haven't won yet. I'm not, you, you know... You haven't? I haven't tackled how... You haven't won one game of keyboards? I'm sorry. That's no, okay. No. Serious? No. How many times have you played, yes. though? Wow. Like 10 or more. That's all right, then. Shut you up. play 100 right. times and you haven't won once, I would say quit gaming, you know what I mean? But <laughs> as of right now, I wouldn't worry about it. It's all right. I'll play with you and let you win. How about that? I don't need your charity. Or maybe I won't let you win. I'll crush you. This guy here. Oh, no, no. Okay, no, not on my number two. You saved that garbage for Sam's picks. <laughs> He's the child. You'll be doesn't. quiet. <laughs> anyway, Keyforge, it's good. It's kind of like a CCG, but not. You know what it is. Why am I talking about it? It's good. I like it. Moving on. Yeah. My number six is a game that I enjoy every time. Now, the expansion certainly didn't hurt things, but the base game. I, I feel like this has a lot more legs than the game it's often compared to, and that's role player. Uh, the game it's compared to, obviously, Sagrada. I found that Sagrada has kind of paled a bit for me as time goes by. I feel like I'm playing much the same simpler, game every simpler. time. With role player, despite the Well, I think cover. what role player is this guy here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Take my story. He's going out to vanquish some beasties, but this dude, even though he's supposed to be helping, look at his eyes, right? He's looking at him like... I'm throwing shade upon you. I shall betray you as soon as we enter the dungeon. But then over here, you think that'd be the traitor. No, that's his mom bagging him up. That's his lunch? That's his bag to lunch. Yes, yeah, she, she's actually just taking him to school for the first day. I'll be taking you to school when this is over. Ooh! <laughs> so, anyhow. I have been to hold! So, anyhow, I really like the theming of this. I like the different... I love how every time you put a die in a place, it affects like six different things. It just, every time I play this, I, I find it more enjoyable. I, different cards come out in a row, and the expansion adds the variety a ton because you're not sure which cards are going to be in any game and gives you more options. Just I, every time I play this, I like I it. I will say, of that thing I was talking about, games that somehow managed to put that spell on you and make you forget how much you enjoyed them, role player might be my number one. I don't care for this theme un unless I'm playing it. Like the game, I mean this game. I'm like, oh, roll up a character in D&D &D or whatever. I don't really like role playing. It looks like a mess, you know. I'm like, this is the, the game that while I'm playing, I'm like, this is awesome. I'm having a great time. If I haven't played it in two months, I'm like, yeah, it's all right. I still have a copy, I think. I might, I might let it go. And then I play again. I'm like, am I crazy? This game's <laughs> awesome. That's an interesting thing. Games that we forgot how good they are. This one manages to pull that trick on me all the time, man. It's so good. Yeah, that's a great pick. Hmm. Good job. Number five. Yay. By the way, 28 and 49, if you add them together, gives you 77. Someone said that online. Man. So why does that matter? Because it was my number seven. I said you could get seven from it somehow. Oh, geez. See, that person enjoys Pulsar, I bet. <sighs> okay. Uh, Nerds. So many. My number, we need to have somebody come by and check the water in this house, I think. I'm just saying. I'm the only one drinking the water, too, I think. But This is straight water, no This is also just water. Look, look, look. I'll read the contents. <laughs> ingredients. Carbonated water. That's it. Wrong. What's the second ingredient? Natural flavors. Natural. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Natural Fresh flavors. squeezed. Go ahead. All right, my number five. Um, <laughs> Natural flavors. <laughs> my number five is is uh, also on my on my uh, top ten of all time, I believe, and uh, that is Memoir Forty Four. 
Um, MR44, every single time I play this game, it simply continues. Up, 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 up. Um, and away. There is so many different reasons for it. A lot of people poo-poo the game because of, first of all, card draw. Uh, rolling dice is too random. Card draws are, are too random because this, this, that, and that. I contest that. An experienced Memoir 44 player will always be an inexperienced one. Puh! Always. Humbug. Always is pretty strong. Uh, I'm, I'm still pretty... I'm still pretty solid on it. Well, then, how the I will internet, say more how often the than not. up on you, then? Because Rainer is a good player. Oh, I would dare say uh, he is better than I am. Uh, he's a better gamer than I am. I destroyed his army. He's a better Exodus. gamer than I am, even though he's an experienced in memoir. He made good choices. He whooped me one time. I think you should just leave now, because he just said you were a better gamer than he is. I don't think we can go up from that point. I. That's pretty awesome. He didn't say it about me. I... Well, you see, <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> Sorry, man. We still have a few more to get through. Then you may openly. Weep. I understand I that the cards in a bit. <laughs> I understand that the card draws and the and the dice rolls are definitely there. That those are random elements. I get it. And I've been stuck where uh, I didn't have the right card for the right field of battle. But so I had to change my strategy and start working on the other other on the other fields and start trying to gain points that way. It, it, you have to ebb and flow. I get it, but. Um, with all of the different scenarios that are available, with all of the different expansions, right. I, I am hoping, sometimes beyond hope, that the, the, the fact that they've revamped the air pack and now that they've, they're putting that out, that other things are coming down the road. I Memoir, hope, I hope, I hope. Memoir 45. Maybe even the if nuke it's... One. You just flip the board. Maybe. <laughs> it's a quick demonstration. Maybe if they even just reprint some of the stuff that's already available, some of the stuff that's like way out of print, way you can't get it anymore. Reprinting some of that stuff, that would be great. I'm really hoping, but who, who knows. Uh, but my number five, Memoir 44, always, always going to be an evergreen for me. All right, my number five is the sequel to the beloved Azul. This is Stained Glass of Sintra. And uh, again, this is a fairly new game, yes, but the more I've played it, the more I've enjoyed it. It continues to move up for me. It's It uses the core system of the original Azul yep. and keeps surprising me with tactical choices that are interesting. Yes. In the original one, I felt like I had sort of plumbed those depths, say, four plays in. Okay? Mm. And that doesn't mean that it's good, that it's not good. I'm still enjoying the choices. But I can now spot pretty much all the time, right? And anybody can, and once you've played a few times, like I should take that set, or I should not, because you're gonna be stuck with it, or whatever, right? Sintra has a lot more going on with it, and it all comes down to the timing of turns makes the entire structure more loosey-goosey. It's not so rigorous. I like being able to pass, even when you were not expecting me to pass, because I have play range, but I'm going to pass anyway because I'm going to stick somebody with something they don't want. <laughs> or I want to see what develops first or whatever. Even that, which is a minor thing, is going to add a lot of that surprise element, that replayability, that fun to it. You know, which windows you finish first and then continue to score if you, if you play them, you know, deeper into your arrangement. I, I like that a lot. I think this one... Overall, it's just a stronger design. Now, I think it might not have, you know, we might not love it as much maybe if we didn't have the first one already in play, but I'm really captivated by it. And like I said, it just keeps getting better for me. I'm fascinated by how many new games you have on this list. Like, normally right? you're the king of the old games. I love old, man. But sometimes you got to throw a little love on new, too, like the song says. Do it. Which song is that? Well, I don't remember that song. Can you refresh my memory? You gotta throw a little love on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that. Centra is definitely my favorite of the two. Oh, go! I'm trying to keep them together, folks. I'm sorry. I'm scared. I'm sorry. Sam, I'm What's scared. happening here? What? No, what is fun. this natural flavors mean? <laughs> it's unnatural flavors. That's a Cthulhu drink. When you get that, it's unnatural flavors. <laughs> All right, my number five is from a few years ago, 
A fairly simple game, and yet I think the maps help out, the different maps but and the expansions, but even the base game. I just keep coming back and enjoying it, and that's Clank. I just keep loving how Clank feels. It, it's, every time I play it, it's more fun to me. Now, I know you like Clank in space Sorry. better, um, and you really should play Clank in space apocalypse at some point. You'd really like that. Uh, but Clank just... And I, I could have thrown Clank and Space in here, too. You know, they're both very two sides of the coin. I'm just less cult of the new than Z. Um, no, I, love, I love new games. The, my uh, favorite games are the ones that are not released yet. <laughs> Actually, I like the new ones a little better than the old one, too, so it doesn't matter. But Clank, just a really fun game. I, every time I come into it, I have a great time. I, I remember just how much fun it is, and it seems really fun. Anyway, Clank, my That's number a good five. Pick. That's a good pick. And my song does not exist yet. I'm working I'm on sure it. I'm sure this is long about There's clank. a lot of clanking it up. <laughs> clank. I didn't know this came with handles. Number four. Yeah, well, I didn't yeah, know the Roomba came it. with handles until until yesterday. Mm -hmm. Go. Don't do it. Don't break it. Believe me, number four. Quattro, yes. Yo. Number four is a game that uh, I actually got myself into a conversation about on Facebook a couple days ago. <laughs> okay. I think we did that with a lot of games. No, 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 no. This is, I, I usually don't foray into the Facebook group very very often. Because you're scared. No, because it blows up my phone with responses and all that other kind of stuff. There's just so uh, many people. Because it's one of those Samsung phones. No. <laughs> what is wrong with you today? Oh, my goodness, Mason. <laughs> Take that away from him. He's... <laughs> I touch it, I come back with claw marks. I think a lot, Sam. Champions of Midgard is uh, my number four. And uh, every time I play this game, it really sings. And it just continues to sing. And uh, I just really enjoy it. And, and it, it's there. The conversation we were having about uh, Champions of Midgard, and I'm not going to go too far into this, but it does kind of play into this because I, I really enjoy the game because of the expansions now. Uh -huh. That is not saying that the base game by itself is not good it's a great game in the core box it is a good game in the core box no it is a great game in the core box it is a greater game with the expansions it is a greatest game that's not true i like five other games it's better, better <laughs> with the expansions Yes, I think we can agree on that. Right, but people were saying in in the conversation that it was bad without that. That it was bad without it, and that's what they get from. If we say, for example, Tom and I say that this is an essential expansion. Oh, it's that thread. It's that thread. I almost went in that thread, and I thought I will regret it. Yeah, well, I don't. So regret if we say it. something's an essential expansion, that therefore people means think the that game that is means bad. Means you, you must buy it. No, they're saying if, if you say a game, if if you say an expansion is essential. You are by nature saying the game is bad, without it. Yes, which is what he was going to say, I believe, before he cut. And off. I agree. Yeah, but, <laughs> but before he said that, he was going to say something else. I don't know what I was going to say. Oh, uh, the well, monster was probably going to say it. But Feed so anyway, me, what 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 we're saying is that if it's an essential expansion, if you enjoy the game, you will enjoy the game more with the expansion. There it is. There it is. That's what an That's essential game is. That's what we mean by is. essential to you, no. the lover of when this When I say game. essential, I mean, seriously, I'm not without joking because we've been doing a lot of that. I mean, I won't play the game without it again. Yeah, but I, it does not then nah, mean no. that the no, game is bad. I mean. Well, that's fine if that's No, what you but mean. it means I think the game is but what if so much better with it. What if they don't have the expansion? Then I flat out refuse to play it. Wow. You do, but it doesn't make the game bad. Elitist much? How's that elitist? Snuffing your nose at someone who wishes to play I didn't a base snuff game. My nose. They like, you said you, you want to play this. I said you the expansion. They I say will no. Refuse. I say well, I'd love to. I don't have time. So you <laughs> lie, <laughs> man. People. Yeah, baby. I'm gonna start Tom a about lies to you. No. Champions of Midgard will continue to grow. I I really enjoy the Dark Mountains expansion. Is ooh, that one's growing on me. I really like it. Take it or leave it with me. Um, but the Valhalla expansion is is really uh, what really helps the game sing for me. So that is Champions of Midgard. It continues to get better. Number four. All righty. My number quattro is Five Tribes. Ah, it should have been your number five. You keep making I, uh, mistakes. It was, and I moved it because I don't want to be that. Don't want to be that guy. That guy, yeah. Um, 
Besides, there's six tribes now anyway, so it's... It was my number six <laughs> originally then. The expansion adds a six one or something. Say what? Yeah, that's true. You can only play the game with four, though, and it was like... <laughs> you know, it was a mess. <laughs> anyway, Why do they call it five tribes anymore, then? It's five tribes originally. Uh, it has essential expansions, though, out there. Some essential expansions that I would recommend. And if what? playing without them, the game is bad suddenly. <laughs> but... I just play with them, and everything is fine. I really enjoy Five Tribes. Do you play with both of them? No, I don't. I'd never have, actually. You play pick one or the other? Pick one or the other, or the base game. I probably play the base game more than anything else, because I'm usually teaching it. I haven't played the newest one. I really like the The newest the one's great. One. The Genie one was fun. They do. I would say these are not essential. Actually, an essential one to me almost implies you put it in there every time. These I would add in after someone's familiar with the game. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. Um, so I play a base game a lot. I really enjoy it. And again, every time I play, I am captivated by the game. Turn after turn, I am very engaged in what's going on. Conversation uh, gets gets fun. There's all you know. Teaching this game is fun, which is a rarity for me. Not that I dislike teaching games, but it's rarely. I'm, I'm, uh, rarely am I excited to teach. It's normally like, all right, let's do the teaching so we can play. But I like teaching this game. I actually enjoy it. Really? I love yeah. teaching. Um, you know, that's that's pretty rare for me. I just am fascinated by it. The last time I played that I remember... No, no, I played at Dice Tower West and at the Retreat. And both plays were really enjoyable. Everybody was fun at the table. That's a big part of it. But the game is just captivating. And I love seeing people make clever moves. I love uh, being able to spot something great when I didn't expect it. The game surprises me all the time. That's what I like about it. So five tribes, my number four pick. I'm captivated by that game too, but in a bad way. Like it holds you captive. My brain locks up. Right. It's like it captivated. throws your brain in jail. It does. And throws away the key. It does. And then it pees in your food plate instead of giving you soup. You went too far. Tell you me. went take too that, far. Take I'm that sorry. Take that away right, I'll just go to the, My number four. Just throw away the key. That's it. You need it. to stop drinking it. My number monster. four was good for you. almost a tie between two games, so I just picked one of them. Uh, this is the other one, number three. We were just talking about essential expansions. I would say every expansion for this game is not even remotely essential. In fact, if I never play with the expansions again, I would be okay. Let me say, hold on, give me a hint. Because I think this designer is great at games, but not necessarily <sighs> expansions. What's the game? Race for the Galaxy. It is Race for the Galaxy. Woo! Me and Z know how to give each other clues. Don't put us together and time's up. Watch out. We'll, bur we'll burn you up. Uh, I almost, but I almost put Roll for the Galaxy here, too. Okay. Because both of those, I'm like, I'll play Race, and I'll be like, oh, Race, that's the game. And I go back and play Roll. I'm like, Roll was the game. And then I go back and play Race. I'm like, oh, I meant Race. Yeah. The, the board game is also good, the New Frontiers, but that one hasn't go. So I'm, I'm just putting up Race for now. Both of these games have really held up well for me over the Absolutely. years. Absolutely. Every time I go back and play race, I find some new kind of cool combo. Uh, I like watching my opponent and what they're doing. Roll is the exact same way. Um, but again, seriously, if I never play with the expansions for either of those games, I'm perfectly fine. Right. right. Well, the, yeah, I'm perfectly fine. So race for the galaxy, my number four. Cool. Good stuff. Number three. It's time for number three. My number three. I recently played a Dice Tower West with Rotto. I think we're we're keeping up the uh, Dice Tower West mentions in this game. Hopefully, it's not a drinking game for anyone out there. They'd be drunk oh right boy. now. Oh boy. Yeah. Let me see. One, two, three, four. Four of my ten were played at Dice Tower West. My number three is five Village Attacks. Brain. Really? Yeah. My number three is Village Attacks. Uh, this is uh, put out by Grimlord Games, I believe, is the name of their company. It's two for me. And uh, it is a game that I normally wouldn't actually in the. the this is a Z theme. Theme, yeah. It's it's a dark theme. You're actually playing bad people. Ho, ho, ho! Uh, you are taking control over, you know, uh, a necromancer or a. Oh. 
Uh, man, I can't remember. Headless now. Horseman, that's the dude yeah, right the there. Headless Horseman. I mean, you're, you're the bad people, <laughs> and the villagers are attacking your stronghold. I will end them. Yes. Excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> Um, the villagers are, are attacking your stronghold, and you're trying to uh, keep them at bay uh, through a number of different devices, outright attacking them, uh, setting traps for them to run into that push them out of the room or uh, squash them or whatever it might be. But there's a number of different ways you can keep them at bay, but that's the whole point. You're, they're trying to destroy the heart of the castle, and uh, you're trying to keep them from getting there. And uh, it's, it's very has a very similar feel to like a tower defense game. I mean, that's really what it is um, because they're going to follow certain paths and so forth and so on. But uh, every time I play the game, it, I just enjoy it a little bit more. Um, I like the the, the different uh, powers that each of the different bad guys can have, and, and I like upgrading your person, leveling them up, and that type of thing. Uh, is that co cool? It is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, everybody is trying to defend from the. Um, nobody takes on the role of the. Nobody's uh, the villagers. They yeah, are automated, the, yeah, and you're all automated. bad pushing out the correct. The, the correct humans, the filth. Very much so. Uh, so I was just pleasantly that's reminded cool. of how much I enjoy like this that. game recently, and and uh, that's why it made my uh, my list. So, uh, village attacks my number three. Hmm. All righty, my number three is the Manhattan Project. Energy Empire. Wow. You didn't even give us a clue. Just went out and said it. Sorry. Uh, you can guess. It's a game about energy. <laughs> Manhattan and Project? No. Manhattan Project 2 Minutes of Midnight? No. And it, I don't you, know any other one ones. dice, and you roll dice to generate your energy. You're kind of building up an empire. Nothing? Gosh, he's so dense. The anyway, empire Manhattan energy. Project Energy Empire. Now you go, ah. Go ahead. Ah. There we go. I don't remember uh, this one. This one um, is a Euro game. I like the theme. It's certainly outside most of the Euro games, you know, medieval times or Middle Ages or early man, whatever. Those sort of typical Euro game themes. I like that this is different from that, but so was the first Manhattan Project, and that's not on the list. What this one, the reason this one's on the list for me is... Some of those mechanisms just continue to surprise me how they managed to bring so much to the table with a lot of simplicity. And that's what I really enjoy. Rolling dice for resource production, for making energy is what they are. I love that. You managing your environment and the pollution and drilling, you know, uh, oil drilling and this and that on a board with a couple of tokens gets the job done. Grabbing cards by sending out a worker or two out there, and then the cards, very simple, they get the job done. Even the evolution of the passage of time, those event cards, I really like the way that works. And again, it gets a lot done. It really puts me in that world with not a whole lot of moving parts, at least in my opinion, not a whole lot of moving parts. I got to play this again, let's say five months ago or so. Loved it. I'm just it really, you know, this game is one of those that, again, I forget how good it is till I play it. Boom. I'm like, man, yes. I look it up. It's rated a 9 out of 10. I'm like, yep, 9 out of 10. I really, really like this game. So Manhattan Project Energy Empire, just a fascinating, fun worker placement game with some fun dice rolling in the middle of it, too, you know? So that's my number three. My number three is a heavy Euro game that just had an expansion come out, but I don't I like it with or without the expansion. Just every time I play this, I find more and more things to do, mostly because there's 60 different things you can do every turn anyway. And that is Feast for Odin. There's just so much in this game. Every time I play it, I'm like, how can I build my Tetra shape? What strategy will I follow in this game? So many choices, and they're all fun. I really like the game a lot. Sometimes I'll modify my choices based on what the other people are doing. Mm -hmm. But usually, I don't have to worry about it because they're probably doing something different than me. There's just that many different things to do. Okay. Um, I like building that little board. Filling it up is extremely satisfying every time. And it's not just put shapes in. It's working hard to get the different things to fill it up. I love it. Fantastic game. Feast for Odin. I should mention here before we go any farther um, that as I'm picking these on the list, I'm not necessarily picking them how much I like the game. 
Mm. I'm picky, like how much every time I play it, it just surprised me at my continual enjoyment and it gets better for me. Okay, okay. Because my, well, then I think yeah, Sam has to be the same way since you've already done your number one game. Yeah. At eight. Yeah, for me, that's kind of it too. Yeah. Number two. My number two also got played at Dice Tower West. And uh, I think Dice Tower West was the fourth time I've played the game, maybe just the third. But each play uh, has been in uh, almost an exponential liking of the game. Mm. Um, exponential? Ooh. Western Legends is. Really? Oh, wow. Yes. Western Legends is. Uh, and you know, the last time that I played the game at Dice Tower West, it was a real take that best. It really felt like that. That's why it was like on my last list. I feel like you mentioned this last year. Yeah, <laughs> last, last week. Last week, take that. And yes. that's, right. and, and so if you're going to, uh, Sam just puts the same games on his list all the time. Yeah, sure, fine, whatever. But it fits because every time it is so much better than the last time I played the game. For example, the first time I played the game, I felt like I was being told what to do by somebody that was sitting at the table. Um, Stop doing that. It oh, wasn't him. I can't see you. It wasn't him. Um, oh. but, Stop um, doing that. Dork. <laughs> Dorcas Maximus <laughs> Aurelius the yeah, third. That's true. <laughs> Very true. He's but my brother. the second time I played the game uh, was with the expansion Annie Up, and now that yes, yeah, so I have played it three times. And, and then at Dice Tower West, we just played a regular uh, game of it, and it just the Western theme so envelops every single bum, time bum, bum, of this bum, game. Bum, 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 uh, every time, every yes. single time we play this game, and, and that's one of the great things about it. it it's one. It's probably my favorite Western theme game. At this is why we're not doing a top ten Western games anytime soon because it'd be like number one Western Legends, Western Legends. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, looking for the number two. Be my number one. That's why I didn't pick you because I wasn't sure. But it would probably still be on your list. It's five tribes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you could be the cowboy you could be somewhere in the world where that would be west. Correct. So you're, oh, any you're game right. is western. It depends where you're standing. That's true. So that's my number two. Think about it, man. Western geometry, origins. son. <laughs> no geography. That one. That one. That one. Yes, that one. That was a joke, people. Hit it. I know the difference. No, you doesn't. I mostly. Um, my number two is uh, a quite quite the cultured game. It's called Seize the Day. Son, Carpe Diem. Carpe Diem is my number two pick. Yes, it's very new. Shut up, Tom. I like it. It's ugly, but it's good. Uh, <laughs> it's ugly. <laughs> every time I play it, I... Uh, you have to, like, apologize as you're pulling I it out really, of the box. I really do. I, I, I think I do, actually. Every time I pull this game out, I'm like, I know, I know it's not very attractive. Let me teach you, though. Uh, this is one I enjoy teaching also. This is the only other game from the list here that I did play at, at Dice Tower West, the other one being Five Tribes, which I mentioned. Um, I've been teaching this a lot, actually, lately, and I have I'm just keep getting surprised by how... You know what it is? I think it's how easy it is to get into, which I don't always expect from a Stefan Feld game. I get that from Bruges, from him, and then I get that from some of his lighter stuff, right? And by that, I mean... That it's not that tactically interesting. You know, the lighter stuff. Mm -hmm. This is, does give you a lot to think about. You're saying this is one of your favorite games from him. It really is. I think this is my number two. Wow. Well, I like that. It's, uh, again, it would, it's just so ugly. <laughs> anyway, I, I like that it is a simple game to get into. But there's a lot there to be mined. There's a lot of tactics in this game. There's resource management, there's city building, but the scoring is extremely clever. This idea of putting your token between two cards to score both. And that spot you went on is blocked for the rest of the game. That exact combination will not be scored again. And you try to manage yourself on a track that lets you pick first on that scoring. That's also very important. There's so much gears within gears without becoming Trajan, which where it's like he pulls back the curtain. It's like, look, all the gears. You can see the engine. You can see it all working together. And it's ugly. And this one, it's 
that's mask. I expect that a little bit from a game that is just gears within gears. It's kind of your job as a designer to hide that from me. Otherwise, I feel like I'm just turning a gear, you know? You got to give me something to mask it. This one, I think, does that. So that's what I like about it, and it continues to grow on me. Carpe Diem, my number two. My number two, you know, most of the time when a game comes out with a bunch of expansions, the game bloats. Yes. It really does. I yeah. mean, especially collectible card games, they tend to bloat sure, as time goes sure. by. This is a game I don't actively play, but I'm every time I do play it over the years, I play it multiple times over each year for whatever reason. Um, I find myself enjoying it just as much as the very first time, and that's Magic the Gathering. I got I'm. I know. I'm not getting back into it. I'm, I'm, I might, might actually. We were talking about this yesterday because the new, uh, the new uh, Magic set has a Planeswalker in every pack. <laughs> that's really tempting. <laughs> I mean, like Flynn, baby. Uh, but the thing is. Is magic has all these mechanisms and stuff, but it's so easy to jump into. You grab two decks. The mechanisms are almost always explained right on the card. Sure. If you already know the game, you mean, yes. Sure, Sure, but the game itself isn't that hard to explain. Sure, I'm not talking about oh, look, getting it. it's a picture of your collection. Huh? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. I got rid of most of my cards. Uh, I get... When you get into the meta game, there's that whole thing. I don't even touch that's a that different world. Game almost right. So I'm yes. not talking about that. I'm talking on a casual level. Every time I play Magic, I appreciate what an amazing design it really is. Yes. And you know, because there's games we go back to like Monopoly. I'm like, all right, let's try Monopoly. Maybe we were too harsh on it. No, we weren't harsh enough. Okay, Monopoly needs to be beaten down with a stick. Hmm. Sorry, that's a spiked club. But stickopoly, <laughs> stickopoly, stickopoly. Anyway, spiked club. But upoly. Magic is a game that I just uh, every time I play it, I'm I'm in, I'm impressed with the game, and I still enjoy it. I stay usually arm's length away from it because of the money involved. Yeah, I get that. It's, right. a, it's, a, it's a money I sink. I don't want to yes. even. I thought it was a money sink, and I was just buying the starter decks. Sure. I I'm I'm not even addicted by the packs. Opening the packs. Uh, that new Transformers thing. But, you liking that? You, you're into that? Well, I haven't played it yet. It's not based on I'm something else, though. I'm just the packs and looking at the cards. Oh, you are? Well, the newest set, you can What's combine. It, like? it has all the combining robots, and you okay. get part of the robot, and you got to get all the parts. And What's it like? <laughs> I need to, help! To be a crackhead! <laughs> okay, but Magic, Magic even gathering. collecting all those decks, was just the starter decks, was sure, expensive. it's fine. So uh, I still like it a lot, though, and I'm going to play these new Planeswalker things. Sounds cool. Yeah. I'm going to play it, too. And finally, number one. Sam, go. Number right, my number one, one uh, was at, uh, the last time I played this was at the retreat, one of the Dice Tower retreats. And uh, okay. honestly, before then, I had nearly, not completely, but I had nearly written it off as probably not going to be able to give this back to the table again. Um, Twilight Imperium 4. No. Uh, Twilight Imperium 3. Has an Irish theme to it. Twilight Imperium Inish. Inish. The second. That's correct. Inish, man. And Twilight Imperium Inish. The, the level of enjoyment that I got from this game of was, Inish was, was high. amazingly high. Uh, and the reason that it was is because we were all there. We all, except for one of the players, I think, Ouch. we were all there able to win the game and we were all be taking the imposter tokens and saying that we were going to win on the next game if you don't stop and it was just really tense because we really had to put a lot of thought into what cards are we drafting uh how are we going to use those cards to make sure that these other people get stopped but i still need to to you know make sure that that my claim to the throne is, is valid and it's just, it was such a good game. So much tension, but it was so fun. And my level of enjoyment just shot through the roof on this game. And it, uh, uh, when we started thinking about this, this list, I knew that was going to be on the list. That was one of the, one of the first ones that I, that I right. picked. And so uh, I just really uh, think that it's a, it's a great game. It's, it's, it's not a, 
Uh, it's not a normal kind of game in that you know you just you have this goal that you're reaching for it. Um, you have to tell people that you have accomplished yeah, it's the like winning chess. condition. It's like saying check. You yeah. gotta say I'm gonna win next turn, and we're like. Oh no, you is not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Correct, so correct. It, like, there aren't like that. there aren't a whole lot of games, I guess, that that do that, um, and maybe not overtly, but uh, this one does it and pulls it off very well, and I really enjoy it. So that's my number one, Inish. My number one is also the first one I thought of when we talked about the list. What the title was going to be, it was immediately apparent to me that I, this was going to be on the list. Mm -hmm. I figured it might be near the top, and indeed, it is my number one. Give me a clue. Um, uh, Scrabble. It's a card game. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Scrabble the card game. Close. Close. It's newer than Scrabble. Is it a solitaire game? This better not be that. Not out of the you can play on your cool. own. Yes. Is it Oniram? No, that game's garbage. Arkham Horror. Arkham, Arkham Horror. It's got to be. But see, I game. thought you wouldn't put two Arkham Horror lists. I debated oh, not doing boo! it. Oh, Two of the same. They're the same game. No, they're not. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. They're so different. But basically, this is uh, the same game, yeah, as Arkham Horror, third edition. I would argue that there's a high chance this will be Z's number one next year. It's certainly in the running. Of well, all time. It's in the running because it's my number two from last year. I know, but you talk about this more than Pandemic these days. Pandemic sucks. Um, anyway, Arkham Horror, the card game, by its very nature, which is why I thought of it first and why it is this high on the list, is a game that continually surprises me because there is a continual stream of new content and I am buying it. Am I playing it? Not necessarily. Nobody's saying that. Calm down. But I am buying it. And I'm storing it. <laughs> you okay? I'm just, I'm just, I was uncomfortable there for a minute. I had to, I had to, I had to situate myself. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Arkham Horror, the card game, is fun. It always surprises me with new layouts of... Uh, the layout of the locations is a very clever thing they've been able to pull off. Like, for example, I just played a scenario in which the locations... Sometimes a card represents a whole chunk of a city. Okay. Right? And you go to that whole piece of city. And then you travel maybe to a whole different area of town, whatever. And I just played a scenario in which you put out nine cards... And each one represents, the center one represents the elevator at the first floor, the second one above it, elevator at the second floor, third floor, and the two on the sides, rooms on that floor. What's, What's the fourth the one, third dude? Floor? There is no fourth floor. There isn't a fourth floor? No. I knew it. The four is the number of death! It's just like Korea! Yep. Right, exactly. So, I thought that was very clever. Finding, you know, you can always travel, of course, from the center one up one level. The cards make all this possible, and so far, I have seen incredible amounts of creativity when it comes to making these scenarios. It's unbelievable the, the stuff they've been able to pull off with building a story, uh, a, a scenario, a mission, if you would, around a deck of cards. You have your own, right? That's fine. You built that. But they, and the, what, where they tell you to put things, and now move from here to here. Now flip this card. Now this whole thing changes. It just became a game about running out of a place instead of a game about finding clues. And it's like, that's amazing. It changes. I really like that. That's 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 why it continually surprises me and keeps on climbing. Uh, I could see this being my number one next year. We just lost power. What how, just happened to the screen? How powerful that was. Look at that. I just blew out the generator, y'all. My number one. I'm done, son. Oh, did we lose power on the computer? Yes. <laughs> All right. No. Give me your number one. You're filthy. Well, I can't now. There's no picture. How am I supposed to talk I about it? I ended Without this. Without visual time. aid. It's a good thing I had this. I just blew this up. <laughs> your number one is going to pale in comparison to whatever if you, you say. If you look carefully at the screen, you can see all the stuff in the room. Oh, too late. All right. My number one. <laughs> Also has a slew of expansions, and we did a whole show on this game, and Sam does not like it nearly as much as I do, but I love this game. Every time I play it, I find new stuff, Cosmic mostly, encounter. because there's six gazillion combinations, and that's Dominion. Dominion, yeah. Wow. No, see, Cosmic no, Encounter... Show over. 
Cosmic. Mm-hmm. We haven't done a show on Cosmic Encounter. We did. Don't pay attention, man. You think what? I'm gonna remember this top ten list tomorrow? <laughs> no, please. <laughs> you won't. This you. You won't remember in five minutes when this we're done. Like, the brain. When are we gonna I do that forgot. top ten list? I already done. Forgot about it. what we talking about. <laughs> My brain chemicals is fired up. But Dominion just no. has so much involved with it. There's just so many different things involved in the game itself. I really like it. Um, I'm trying to talk to the. Has the computer restarted yet? No? Okay. <laughs> Imagine a picture of a lot of Dominion cards here. Ooh. I like the Magic Together. How game. diverse the artwork. <laughs> How wonderful the iconography and design. <laughs> the iconography ain't so bad. It's okay. There's almost no iconography of it. Like the coins. That's it. Yeah. Coins? Uh, anyhow, so I really like Dominion. That's my number one. Yes, have some. All right, so that's here's a, your chance. That's, that's a lot of years People, for that game. People, do you... What are games you thought we would put on? So you need to type the name first. So you could say, like, I thought Sam would say this. I thought Tom would say this. And then we can respond to you and say why we did or did not put the thing on. Again, I didn't pick my top ten games on purpose. Sure, right. You know, Cosmic Encounter we mentioned. I love Cosmic Encounter. It doesn't keep getting better because I think it was always at such a high level for me. Like, I always liked Cosmic. How uh, How hard was this list to put together for you? That was a little tricky. I went through my, I went like my top 200, and then I started thinking. You know, we mentioned Dice Tower West, but that did trigger some stuff in my head. Sure, sure. You know, I thought about putting Puerto Rico on the list because I played there, but then I thought, well, I don't know if it keeps getting better. It stays the same. This is a super a subjective bit. list as opposed to all our other objective oh, ones. Oh, sure. All the other ones are all solid right. as a rock. Z, <laughs> people thought you would say Ghost Stories. I thought about it. It was done, and, and I played Did it at Dice Tower. Yeah, was. I was just saying, you just played it at Dice Tower. And I won. You said that. Lies. When I say I, I mean the other people at the table won, but I was also there. Lies. Some people said that they thought I would say Camel Up. Uh, it's gotten better for me for sure. sure. But I don't know. I would say it keeps getting better. That would fit more in the list we did last year, where my, my liking of it has gone up that much. I don't think it gets better every that, time I play. Actually, it, Camel Up for me would definitely be a kangaroo or whatever you call it. That's what I'm that. saying. That's that that same here. The first time I played, I was really underwhelmed. The new version, and and the more I played the original, but now the new version on top of that, yeah, night and day from my original experience. Also, Scythe, Scythe was in the running for sure. Again, that keeps getting better. Yeah, Skitty. Uh, Z Pandemic. No. Terraforming Mars? I like Terraforming Mars from day one, though, a ton. Maybe. Seventh Continent, I didn't put that because I love Seventh Continent, and it just feels like I keep following a story. So I don't know that it gets better every time I play it. Okay. Because I'm going to start seeing some of this stuff over, so maybe the enjoyment will go down slightly, but I still love the game. Okay. Um, hey, look, Dominion. Sam Carcassonne. Hey, Tom, what was your number one? <laughs> Carcassonne? Um, I guess the thing with Carcassonne is that I like the around the world version of Carcassonne right. better than the base game. And um, so I, I guess I like. If you could put the whole family of games as a cat, as a pick, yeah. then sure, yes, why not? But we don't do that sort of cheatery around here. Sam has never deviated from a very simple 10 through 1 format. Yeah. No tomfoolery. Oh, it's, this is actually 1 through 5 and 1 through 5. Oh, I'm alternating between this list and a list I thought about but told nobody. <laughs> you know, we don't do that kind of stuff around here. We play it straight. I might have had too much caffeine. Z <laughs> yeah. Imperial Settlers. I also definitely thought of it, and the latest expansion is fantastic. Um, that could have easily been my 11 or 12. I did not. I didn't make an 11 or 12, but that and Ghost Stories that someone mentioned. Definitely thought of both. Not Pandemic. I've always liked it. And it's sort of settled for a long time now, right? There hasn't been a new expansion or anything in a while. But Ghost Stories, yeah, and Imperial Settlers that they keep supporting, yeah. Sam Rebellion. I haven't played it in a while, so that's... I I thought about it, but I just haven't played it in a while. Um, I don't know that I like it more every time I play it. I think it's more the the whole idea of what you were saying earlier. It just kind of stays the same with Puerto Rico. Um... Uh, that's what you're saying with Puerto Rico. For me, Star Wars Rebellion, I really enjoy it. I get it, you know, but... You like it as much as Puerto Rico. Not much more. Do we lose power again? Uh Uh-oh. How did that I'm so excited. You didn't have... You still have it plugged in. How did it... 
right. Oh, oh no, no, I why not? Because of the power thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, oh, anywho. Hell juice. Uh, you'll notice that we talked a lot about Dice Tower West, and we talked about the retreat. Those things are possible. Dice Tower Con is in July. You can still sign up to come to that and play games with us there. You definitely can have a really good chance of playing games with us at the retreat. Mm-hmm. You can find more information on that at DiceTowerRetreat.com. If you just want to come and play games, we're about to go to the Gathering of Friends in a couple of weeks, and we're going to talk about playing games. And if you sit there and go, I wish I'd go to Gathering of Friends, you can. It's called Dice Tower Retreat. It's Gathering of the Friendlier Friends. Wow, I wouldn't say that. You might get disinvited. I might get sued. Uh, no. Is it uninvited? You might get, you might get uninvited. uninvited yeah. yeah, not disinvited. We don't need your kind here. <laughs> All righty. Well, that's our top ten list. Hey, we'll be back one more time live this week. Tomorrow we're doing a back talk on something. We're not quite sure, but we'll see you then. Until then, I'm Tom Vassal. I'm Z Garcia. Thank you, everybody. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Take care. Yeah, oh, what are you throwing stuff right. for? Take that was, it! That was pretty good.